Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Onion Soup by Radar DeBoard Marco dragged his spoon around the inside of his bowl as his father came back to the table. His dad sat down with a smile on his face and wasted no time digging into his second helping of the soup. After slurping up a few more spoonfuls, his dad finally noticed he wasn't eating. "'What's wrong, kiddo?' his father asked before taking a loud slurp of soup. Marco sighed as he stared down at the nasty-looking food. It's nothing, Dad. I just don't like onions. His father nodded. I know you don't, kiddo, but we don't really have money for anything else. After a long pause, he said, Tell you what, you have yourself a couple more spoonfuls, and you can be excused from the table. Plus, I promise, I'll make something different for dinner tomorrow night. How does that sound? Marco smiled at his dad and suggested, Can it be meatloaf? His father chuckled. <laughs> you and your meatloaf. Okay, okay, I'll make meatloaf, I promise. With his dad's promise set in stone, Marco eagerly began to slurp down the onion soup. It certainly didn't taste any better than before, but the idea that he would be getting meatloaf tomorrow made it a lot easier to eat. He slurped up five or six spoonfuls, then pushed himself back from the table his chair making a sound as it was dragged back on the hardwood floor. "'Okay, I'm done,' he said, standing up. His father gave him a nod to let him know he could leave, and he raced upstairs to his room to play the new game he had downloaded onto his tablet over the weekend. Throughout the next few hours, he would randomly think about the soup and how nasty it had been. Why did his dad have to put veggies in everything? They always tasted bad, and if something tasted that awful, how could it be good for someone to eat it? Of course, it didn't help that he hated onions more than any other kind of vegetable, and there was no way he would ever eat onion soup again. No matter what deals his dad made with him, he wasn't going to eat that soup. He continued to think about how much he hated onions, until his dad tucked him in for the night and he drifted off to sleep. Late into the night, Marco randomly woke up. He checked his clock, seeing that it was just before two in the morning, and then glanced at his window to see that it was still dark outside. He didn't understand why he'd woken up, but decided to ignore it and go back to sleep. As he closed his eyes, there was a very quiet, creaking noise that reached his ears. Upon hearing that sound, he opened his eyes and scanned his room. Another creak sounded, and he looked at his closet door. The door was open just a crack, which creeped Marco out because he always kept his closet closed. He stared at the door, and after a few minutes, another creaking noise came as the closet opened a little bit more. Marco gasped and pulled his blanket up to his chin as the door opened a little more. He wanted to run out of the room or scream for his dad to come help him, but he was too scared so he just pulled his blanket up a little more. Suddenly, the door to the closet swung wide open, and Marco jumped in surprise. Only a few seconds went by before a nasty-looking hand poked out from the closet. Slowly, the rest of the body the hand belonged to came into the room. Marco got a good look at the thing that had just left his closet, and it was the scariest creature he had ever seen. It was a big, fat monster with purple skin that looked like it was covered in slime. The thing had really long fingers and sharp teeth that were easy to see because it was smiling. 
The monster also had super short legs that didn't have any knees, so it waddled like a penguin when it walked. Marco was so terrified of the monster that he couldn't speak, and he couldn't leave his bed. All he could do was watch as the spooky creature slowly moved toward him. Eventually, it reached his bed and looked down at Marco while licking its lips. Yum, you look tasty, it said in a super low voice. Marco trembled in fear, but he managed to say, Please don't, 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 don't eat me! Eat, don't eat me! The monster <laughs> chuckled before moving its long fingers down and pulling the blanket away from Marco. It continued to lick its lips as drool began to run down the side of its mouth. The scary creature leaned over and opened its mouth, but then it stopped moving. What's that smell? The monster asked. W -w 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 what smell? Marco replied as he still shook in fear. The monster sniffed the air a few times before turning its attention back to Marco. It got a few inches away from him and gave him a big whiff. And then it frowned. Immediately, it took a step back from the bed and covered its nose with its big fingers. You smell like onions, he said. I hate onions. Then the monster waddled back to the closet. As it shut the door, the monster said, You stink, kid. Marco sat in his bed, staring at the closet while thinking about everything that had just happened. He kept thinking about how the monster had said it hated onions and how it had called him stinky. After a few minutes, his fear went away and he jumped out of bed. He ran down the stairs and headed for the kitchen to see if there was any of the onion soup left. From now on, he was going to eat as many stinky vegetables as possible, especially onions. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids.